In this podcast, we're going to go over the major steps of metabolism. So we're going to go from digestion of food all the way down to the production of ATP. All right, let's talk about the general overview of what's going on here before we get into the nitty gritty. So there are three types of um, foods, I guess, if you will, um, that we can eat that will give us energy fats, carbohydrates, and protein, and your body processes those differently. But notice that all of these arrows tend to come in to acetyl-CoA. So the goal is to take your lipids, it's to take your carbohydrates, it's to take your proteins, and it's to form that acetyl-CoA because acetyl-CoA can be used in the citric acid cycle to produce some energy, not much. Um, but really, we use that acetyl-CoA to get us the energy, the high-energy electrons that we need in order to go through electron transport chains and oxidative phosphorylation. It's that oxidative phosphorylation that gives us huge amounts of ATP, which we can use as coupled reactions um, to make energetically unfavorable reactions happen in the body. So this is how we get work done to maintain life. You guys have a similar albeit different. Um, graphic organizer, I strongly recommend that you work with your images in the book to get that filled out so you can get an understanding of um, where each of these food sources enters into aerobic respiration. All right, so we're going to go through four very, very general um, major steps of metabolism. And the first is digestion. You're going to have to take in carbohydrates, proteins, and lipids. So you're taking large molecules and you're breaking them down into smaller molecules. So the digestion of carbohydrates, as you may know from your anatomy physiology class, is going to start in the mouth with salivary amylase. And amylase is going to hydrolyze the bonds between your polysaccharide into those individual monosaccharides into glucose. Um, and we'll talk about how glucose enters in just a moment. Proteins do not start to get digested until you get into the stomach, and it is the enzyme pepsin that breaks those amide linkages between your amino acids. So we're taking um, the primary structure, a long chain of amino acids in a protein, and we're breaking them down into their individual amino acids. The digestion of lipids is in the small intestine with the enzyme lipase. So lipase will break or hydrolyze the ester bonds in a triacylglycerol forming glycerol and three fatty acids. These can be further broken down, um, and we'll talk about this actually in class, what process it is, to release energy that is stored in those bonds. So looking at this chart, and again, this is just another version of the same chart, we have covered this. We have covered digestion. That's breaking these um, larger molecules down into smaller ones. Now we'll talk about the nitty gritty of how we get them through get them through aerobic respiration and get energy from them. Just kidding, we have to talk about the mitochondria really quick before we do that. All right, so the mitochondria is that site for energy production. The reason why your mitochondria works so well for this function is because it has a lot of membranes to it. In the very last stages with the electron transport chain, and uh, oxidative phosphorylation, it requires this inner membrane. What we're gonna do is we are going to drive protons against their concentration gradients. We're going to build up a ton of protons on one side, and as they move back down their concentration gradient, that's when we get them to do work. That's when we create our ATP. And so this is best done inside the mitochondrial matrix, which is like the cytoplasm, and using the inner membrane as a barrier to build that concentration. We'll talk about that later. For the next three steps, we're going to use a graphic organizer, and it is really overwhelming to look at this image, so I'm going to spend just a few minutes kind of orienting you so that you know what you're looking at. So um, most of this is happening in the cell interior in the cytoplasm. Here's our mitochondria, and then this little cutout is going to be what's occurring in the inner mitochondrial membrane. So when we get to that step, know that that's actually happening within the mitochondria, but we really needed to zoom in on that. So um, once our food has gone through the first steps of digestion, um, it's been broken into its uh, glycerol and fatty acids, it's been broken into glucose, it's been broken into amino acids, 
um, it will go through the next step. So we are going to talk through as if we were working on glucose since glucose is our major energy source. All right, so here is glucose. This is after digestion. Glucose is going to go through a process called glycolysis. Glycolysis is going to yield two pyruvate. It's going to yield two ATP. Remember, that's our energy source. But it's also going to give us NADH. It's going to give us high energy electrons that get picked up by our coenzyme NADH. And notice where they are traveling. They're going to travel to the electron transport chain, which is actually inside the inner mitochondrial membrane. Um, this process is happening uh, in the cytoplasm of the cell. So we're not into the uh, mitochondria yet. Um, before we can move into the mitochondria, our 2-pyruvate have to be converted to a to acetyl-CoA. That's acetyl coenzyme A abbreviated CoA. So once we realize that we have aerobic conditions, so oxygen is present, that's when the 2-pyruvate get converted into 2-acetyl-CoA. Um, and 2-acetyl-CoA then can enter your mitochondria and go into the, the next stage. Something we'll talk about in class, but we're not going to talk about here, is what happens if you have anaerobic conditions. Um, notice that if we have anaerobic conditions, we don't go into the mitochondria. We don't produce 2-acetyl-CoA. We go through fermentation. We'll talk about that in class. All right, so step number three has us moving. We are now in the mitochondria. So in the last step, we produce those 2-acetyl-CoA from the 2-pyruvate from one glucose molecule. So your citric acid cycle can take one acetyl-CoA at a time. Since we have two acetyl-CoAs, we will enter one acetyl-CoA, it will go through the citric acid cycle, and then a second turn of, of the citric acid cycle with our second acetyl-CoA. So we actually go through this process two times for a single um, glucose molecule. The citric acid cycle is going to produce for us two ATP. Again, these are going to contribute right here to our total ATP numbers for one molecule of glucose. So we produce a couple ATP, just like glycolysis produced a couple uh, ATP. Um, we're also going to release some of those high energy electrons, and that's important. Um, notice that your high energy electrons are going to travel and they're actually traveling right here to the inner mitochondrial membrane, but they're traveling to the electron transport chain, just like the high energy electrons we got from uh, glycolysis. These are gonna travel to the electron transport chain where we're gonna see them do work for us uh, later on. So citric acid cycle happens in the mitochondrial matrix. That's like the cytoplasm of the mitochondria. And we get from it 2 ATP, NADH, and FADH2. All right, in our final stage, uh, we will look at the electron transport chain and oxidative phosphorylation. So we went through citric acid cycle. Um, now we are looking at specifically the inner membrane space and the mitochondrial matrix, but we are in the inner mitochondrial membrane. So let me see if I can draw just to show you. This little space here represents cytochrome complexes that are in your inner mitochondrial membrane. They're proteins in a membrane. All right, so the first stage is electron transport. So these electrons are going to get dropped off in the electron transport chain, and they are going to travel through the electron transport chain. As they move from one cytochrome complex to the next, they're going to lose a little bit of energy. The energy that they're losing goes to drive hydrogen ions against their proton gradient against their concentration gradient. So what we're doing is it's going to take energy because we're taking these hydrogen ions from a side with ha which has low hydrogen ion concentration and we're forcing them against their concentration gradient to a side that has a high concentration. All of these guys would like to be isotonic so they're going to try to travel back across this membrane when they do this, the only place they can travel through is this little molecule at the end. This guy right here is your ATP synthase. 
whoops, not with that. I'm going to write out what I'm talking about so you know what I'm saying. ATP synthase is an enzyme that when we put hydrogen ions through, that will power it um, to phosphorylate ADP into ATP. This is our big product. We're, we are making ATP, our energy currency for the cell. Um, so all of these hydrogen ions want to go back across their concentration gradient. They want to move from high to low. That's simple diffusion. Um, and the only place they can get through is that ATP synthase. So those protons coming through that enzyme are what drive the phosphorylation of ATP. That's what makes all that energy. And if we have oxygen present and we can go into the mitochondria, um, we're able through uh, oxidative phosphorylation. Oops, that's not the wanted, we are able to produce 32 to 34 ATP at this stage alone. If we we're to combine that with the two ATP we get from the citric acid cycle and the two ATP we get from glycolysis, that gives us a grand total of 36 to 38 ATP per glucose. That is our moneymaker. That is why we need oxygen to produce so much energy.